Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how and why I installed this mini split into my RV. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now I said how and why. So let's first start with the why. I put a mini split air conditioner heat pump on my um, RV. A lot of people do it for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, it's way more effective cooling. Um, you know, you put the little the head somewhere in the RV and it just cools that room down amazingly. You know, having such a long RV, it makes it more difficult to do that route just because you need to have multiple heads. Um, the air won't reach all the way up front. Um, but the energy efficiency of these things is absolutely insane. So for example, when this thing is just maintaining, like right now, the fan is on, it's running inside and uh, it's probably pulling like three or 400 watts total. Um, it is extremely energy efficient. Now it can ramp up real high if, if the demand is needed or when it's in heating mode, uh, it does take a bit more juice and uh, it'll ramp up to anywhere from 1200 all the way up to 1800 watts um, for that super 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 high end uh, of, of, of cooling or heating whatever it's needed to do but again for the ma maintenance where it just maintains the temperature all day god it just takes up so little amount of power i can show you guys all the graphs from my solar and the energy use that we have and it's just insane but uh i went with a ducted mini split and i'll tell you why i did that because with this big 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 huge monster of an rv you have a front bath, you have the main bedroom, you have a half bath, and then you have the main living space. And if you did just a mini split and you put the cassette up on the wall like a lot of people do, it is not going to reach that front bedroom or that front bathroom at all. I mean, just, this is not gonna happen. Um, so to run multiple heads with multiple sets of copper gets very complex and uh, it's just, it's a, big undertaking so i would decided you know i used to do ac work i'm pretty comfortable with it why not try and do a ducted unit so let me show you guys real quick we're going to get into some of the why and we'll, or excuse me into some of the how and uh, we'll get back to the other side of it so what i needed to do is build a stand that this thing could sit on so what i did is i had a, a guy that i found online um, with some some local recommendations and I got a mobile welder to come out and weld me this frame extension. You can see that it kind of ties in to the normal uh, hitch um, that comes with the Montana. And he welded me this frame that comes out and up and gives it a nice little platform for the mini split to sit on. He's got it tucked super, super tight to the RV. He did an absolutely amazing job. Super clean welds, added gussets everywhere. It is extremely sturdy. And just if anyone's asking, yes, it's good. I drove over 7,000 miles with this thing and I've not had any issues. Now, the other thing that you might be noticing is this hitch extension because obviously the original hitch, let's see if you can see it in there, is way back in there. And so once I had this ex this come out like this, I really couldn't use that hitch for uh, the bike racks like I wanted to. The bike rack was really, really close and whatnot. So what I did was again, had him custom weld me this hitch extension that takes out and now puts my new hitch all the way out to right here. So it basically comes out and lines up with the end of the metal there. And now my bike rack is on there and my e-bikes can go on the back of the rig. And uh, again, 7,000 miles down the road, uh, two e-bikes on that thing, no problems, no cracks, no stress cracks. Everything was good. Uh, the, the, the guy did a really, really good job welding. And, uh, but that's really all I did for that was had him do that. Now I did paint this stuff, um, which was pretty simple. It's just some primer and some spray paint, um, just black, just to get it to uh, not rust and not uh, be any kind of eyesore. Once we had the mini split mounted up here, uh, it's pretty simple. This is where the 240 volt electric comes in. So this is a 240 volt appliance. It means it has two legs of 120, uh, a neutral and a ground. And that comes right into here. I ran that from my sub panel that I installed. If uh, you haven't watched the video already, I'll put it in the corner somewhere back here uh, from my, when I redid all my electrical in this RV, basically to be accommodating for a 240 volt mini split and a 240 volt washer dryer com uh, 
unit. But uh, anyway, so your electrical comes into here, your copper comes in down here. And again, I, I bent the copper nice and tight. So it runs right along the RV and it shoots under and uh, down the rest, which you'll see here later in the video. Also, you notice this tiny black wire right here. This is a communication wire that is uh, basically four wires that has the outdoor unit talk to the indoor unit as well as supply power to the indoor unit. So it has four wires and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the indoor unit and I'll show you what I did. For reference, I'm here on the side of the RV, my main pass-through storage, and uh, this duct does take up a little bit of space right now. You can't really see the unit, but uh, we are. I am gonna show you the unit here in some other clips. But the unit is sitting right in here and I have it ducted based on that plenum over there. I added a couple extra ducts. Um, you know, we have the plenum feeding into the main uh, original plenum, and then I did a lot of custom duct work. So let's talk about that. We can see this large duct that I have that comes over here and it feeds up that way and into the floor. And what this one does is it actually feeds the front bath. So originally it was the, I don't know, two and a half or three inch pipe that uh, fed up there from the regular furnace. I replace it with this very large duct because that room is pretty large and I needed a lot of airflow up there. So I got that duct running up there. We got uh, one of the original ducts from the uh, gas furnace running up here, which this I'll talk about separately, but that actually runs over to the gas furnace plenum. Uh, and then let me take you on to the other side. Here's a look at the unit from the other side. Again, I have a duct on this side kind of blocking but there's the unit right there. The air intake is right back here in the back. So uh, now I have this duct right over here. Let me, this big duct right here goes and it feeds to right underneath my staircase. And what that does is it just dumps a crap ton of air. That's a seven inch duct. And it just dumps a crap ton of air through the grates of my steps and into the main the main living space. It's been doing awesome. Now, again, you see I added this duct onto this side. And what I did was actually added its own separate boot and everything um, and a grate inside because this goes to the other side of the bedroom. Let me back up a little bit. That way you can see the bedroom slide is right there. That goes right into the floor of the bedroom. And what and the reason I did that, and added that second duct into the the main bedroom was because uh like i i'm going to show you in a different part of the video i'm not sure we're going to link it in there yet but um the plenum also feeds the original gas furnace plenum that goes through the floor uh, into the kitchen half bath stuff like that and so the first dump that it has is onto my uh victron quattros so that, that is a conditioned space it dumps a lot of air right on onto those and then just past that another like six inches is a, the floor vent into the master bedroom. And it moves quite a bit of air. It was pushing a lot of air in there, but the bedroom during the heat of the day with the RV facing, you know, the, this side of the RV is south. Uh, you can see the sun is just beaming on it. That slide, that bedroom slide gets hot. Hey, I don't care what you're doing. It is warm to the touch, you know, the, the, the side walls and whatnot, this Florida heat. So uh, I had to get more air into that bedroom to compensate for the heat loss or, you know, technically heat gain where I'm gaining a lot of heat from that slide coming into the RV. Um, and that, so that's why I had to add that second duct and just get a crap ton more air in there. And since I've done that, no problems. It's been absolutely amazing. Super, super comfortable temperatures in the bedroom. This might be hard for some of you guys to visualize, but I cannot get a good enough camera shot on it. So let's just do this from the outside. I might be able to give you another point of reference. So what I wanted, when I did this, I wanted to obviously feed the entire RV, but I also didn't want to necessarily lose the option of using my gas furnace, because like I said, I tied into the original ducting that was the gas furnace fed. So what I did was off, off the main plenum back there, I have that one duct that you saw and there's actually another one on the other side that you can't really see but and it's behind that wall and they feed over to the furnace okay the furnace is right here so and you see how close it is it's literally just the water heater and the and the wall like that's that's it there's hardly anything in between but on the back side of this furnace okay if you were to be looking at this thing it's basically just a box okay 
and it has a duct on the top and like two on the sides and one on the bottom kind of thing and uh, or one on the other side and so what i did was i fed from this duct that i built i fed into that duct system okay so what that does is now i'm dumping air into that uh gas furnace duct system that then is pushing out air through the rest of the gas furnace duct system so uh the heat pump mini split is doing its job going throughout the the entire rv but the gas furnace can kick on and it will dump a crap ton of heat because the gas furnace obviously propane it burns real hot and uh, that air still goes through the rv just as efficiently as it did before and i'm not losing anything by by what i did okay it goes right in to the existing system that it had but it also plugs back into uh my duct plenum that i built because of that feed that i have going to it now when the furnace is on it's also going back that way going through the rest of the duct system that i added you know this other one that goes to the bathroom okay whatever so they're all connected it's all one big system and they can work together i can have the mini split on and the gas furnace at the same time and they just dump a crap ton of heat and i did i used that when we were in colorado we were in negative 13 degree weather the mini split is rated to minus 10 and let me tell you that thing worked pretty darn good all the way well below freezing down to about i would say 15 degrees 10 degrees um it was doing its its job um past that it still worked it was still putting out heat but once it's down in those minus temperatures it was just too cold too frigid cold for the amount that it's uh, the amount of heat that it was putting into the rv wasn't enough to compensate for how cold it was the the ambient air temperature so while it was still doing its job it it was hardly doing its job so most air conditioner heat pumps like the one that's on the rooftop can only go to about 40 degrees so this going all the way down to minus 10 makes it extremely comfortable in those like i said standard cold temperatures we'll say 15 30 degrees it still works and still fine but once we get in those negative temperatures i let the gas furnace help out a little bit and that's all it did was it literally just kind of assisted the heat pump to like get us through the night gas furnace would come on a couple times no big deal and it maintained temperature in the rv we had it set to i want to say like 68 or 69 um, the whole time we were out there and didn't have any issues so for our mini split installation we are doing an air handler where this air handler is now going to get ducted into i'm not sure if you can see that hole right up there but that's what was uh basically for the the furnace um heat vents that are already in the rv um that's what that duct is for and it kind of runs in the bedroom living room and kitchen so i'm going to feed a lot of air through there all we did here was make some little aluminum l bracket or had had some aluminum l brackets made uh to get this air handler mounted nice and tight up in here i got my copper ran i got the electrical for it um definitely still some cleanup to do in here but now we're going to go ahead and get everything strapped up the rest of the way and uh, i'll show you underneath where we have the copper and whatnot coming through so right here where the we have the drop frame for the front cargo area um, i put two holes in there as you can see i put a little bit of uh, protectant around the edges and uh, i'm also going to go ahead and spray foam just like the uh, black pipe is for uh, you know that's just spray foam to be kept in place and insulated i'm going to spray foam that when we're all done but right now i'm just going to work my way back and strap this all the way back to the back of the rv so we finally got the mini split mounted up uh, we painted the framing this morning it was a nice low wind uh, we just took big old sheet of uh, nine nine foot by 12 foot uh, you know like super super thin I don't know if it was like half a mil I mean it was really really tiny um, plastic and uh, just just to protect the rig got it all painted up and then we got our little mounting points bolted in right there but uh, that's it it's now mounted we can start to worry about the electric and the copper for it wanted to show you guys the finished product of the overall mini split so as you can see we have our electrical kind of tied in back there i got my copper bent nice and tight to the body of the rv it goes up under and then all the way up front where we showed you earlier i also when we ran this electrical decided to add a 120 circuit back here um, which is just tapped off of the, the 240 that i ran it's just one of those lines but we uh, added that circuit there so that i can charge my e-bikes 
in the back of the RV. Because otherwise, I'd have to take the e-bikes, you know, obviously off the rack, you know, no wonder, but, you know, put them over to the side of the RV and plug them up and stuff. Whereas right here, if they're on here, they can still be locked down on the rack and I can plug them in and charge them and they'll be good to go uh, whenever we want to use them. So that's why we added that back here. I did put the thermostat for the mini split right here in the passenger storage bay. Um, and that's because the air intake is in the passenger storage bay, right? So that means as the air is coming to the unit, all the old hot air from the RV is gonna be passing through this area. So that's why I have the thermostat mounted down here. Number one, it was just super easy to mount it close to it. And number two, it's good for reading the temperature of the whole RV because again, that's all that air is coming past it before it's going through the unit. So, and it's on an app. I have an app on my phone so I can change it and adjust it anytime I want to right through the app. I am gonna talk about one more thing before I let you guys go, okay? So this unit is a 24,000 BTU unit. A lot of people that know what I've been doing and kind of seen the projects coming, they've been asking me what size unit I did, how is it cooling, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's the short answer. The RV comes with a 15,000 BTU unit in the living room and a 13,500 BTU unit in the bedroom. So that's 28,500 BTUs that it comes with off the showroom floor. Now, this big rig does have the option to add a third air conditioner, and a lot of people add them because if you've ever been in 95 degree or above temperatures, you know that those two air conditioners, aka 28,500 BTUs, is not enough to maintain a comfortable temperature. You, you can take it about 18 to 20 degrees. So, you know, if it's 95 out, you can typically get it 75 in the rig. Um, if it's 100, you're gonna get it down to 80. So, but if you want it cooler, uh, you're gonna add that third unit usually another 13,000 or 15,000 BTU unit. So now you're up into the 30, what is that? What did I just say, 28,000? So plus another 13 is now, uh, you know, 41,000 BTUs. Um, so, you know, 41,000 BTUs to really cool this thing efficiently all the time in 100 degree plus weather. No, the 24,000 BTU mini split does not do anything different um, it, it doesn't magically make the air colder because it's a mini split. Um, yes, it is way more energy efficient. Yes, it dehumidifies. Yes, it does a lot more stuff. It's more efficient cooling, blah, blah, blah. But it's still 24,000 BTUs, British thermal units. That's what a BTU is. It's rated that way for a reason. So the 24,000 BTUs to me is very, very close to the stock 28,500 BTUs that it comes with. So to me, the 24,000 BTU unit does the majority of the work 98% of the time the two RV or the two rooftop ACs that came with it do not ever have to come on in standard environments once I get to extreme heat yes it's gonna have to come on one one or both of those is gonna have to supplement and that's okay because I got enough solar to supplement in midday it won't pull from my batteries at all the solar will be able to make up for it but not the point um, same thing with with heating 24,000 BTUs in heating is not enough for this whole RV, especially when it comes down to those super, super cold temperatures like I was just talking about. And that's why I left the gas furnace in line so I could still use the furnace. So uh, on that note, uh, if you have questions, please, please, please drop them in the comments below. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you can see when I have next videos coming out. Uh, join us online, Why Not RV on Facebook. Um, you can reach right out to me on there and I'll be happy to answer any questions I can for you. If you're trying to design a system similar to mine, let me know. See you next time. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Bye.